Hey YouTube, what is salvation? Salvation is the best gift you could ever have, and I'll show you why in five minutes or less. Imagine with me for a moment. You've just taken a trans-Pacific flight. You're in the middle of the ocean, looking out of the window, seeing the beautiful water. When horror of horrors, the wing catches on fire. The plane goes down to the ground, and all of a sudden, you're, you're in the middle of the water, thousands of miles from shore. But it's OK, because you are an Olympic swimmer. And you have practiced so many hours in the pool, so you start booking it to shore. 6,000 years ago, there was a woman She's walking in the middle of this beautiful garden and all around her was just pure beauty and, and just the most amazing setting you've ever can imagine. When all of a sudden she sees this serpent in a tree saying, hey, you should try this fruit. And she does the one thing that her maker had told her not to do. And now humanity, the human family, got plunged into the most hopeless situation ever to happen you start to swim you're keeping you're swimming you're swimming you're swimming you've gotten a couple miles in but all of a sudden you start to feel cold you're losing some of the, the feeling in your legs and you're starting to get scared you're realizing that it's a long way to shore you know we are that swimmer humanity we are that swimmer we've we're plunged in the middle of the sin problem and we think that we're fine. We think that we're a great swimmer. We think that we can make it to shore. But the reality is, the Bible says, we have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. It says that in Isaiah 64, 6. In other words, it doesn't say that all our bad deeds are like filthy garments. It says that all our good deeds, we think that all of our good deeds will somehow get us to heaven, that God will, God will love us because, you know what, we're good people. But the reality is that's false. And what's worse, we can't just somehow get better. In Romans 8 verse 7, it says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. You see, our natural human condition, we're, we're enemies with God. We can't just, by trying, change our hearts and be better. You're swimming and you're swimming and you're starting to feel completely hopeless. When all of a sudden, amidst the, the swells crashing into your face, you, you hear a sound in the distance. And then pretty soon you look up and you see an orange and white helicopter flying towards you. A man is let down on a rope, straps a harness around you, and pulls you up into the helicopter where there's warmth and food and water. And all of a sudden there's hope. Guys, the only way of getting to shore is that helicopter. Similarly, the only way that we can be saved is through Christ. In Romans 5 verse 10, it says, For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of His Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by His life. In other words, Christ came down and He died. He, he paid the price of our sins. But more than that, He lived a perfect life. He never sinned. And in that sinless life, He created a spotless robe of righteousness. In Isaiah 61 10, it says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exalt in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. In other words, Christ gives us his own perfection. He covers us like, like, a, like a garment. And then when God sees us, he not only sees us as if we had never sinned, but also as if we had always only ever done righteousness. You know, this is the situation that we're in. Of ourselves, it's hopeless. We can't get to shore. We're like that swimmer. But with Christ, we can accept this offer of salvation. And as He comes in, as He takes control of our lives, He can create it into something of beauty. He can bring us to heaven where there will be no more sorrow or sickness or death. This is my appeal to you. Won't you accept this offer of a free salvation? This thing that God is willing to do for you that you can't do for yourself come to Christ, accept His goodness in place of your own, and be led into an experience that is more beautiful, enriching, and powerful than anything you have ever experienced in your life.